Hi, I'm Adam and welcome back. And today I want to share with you five signs why your photography does not suck and how we can use these things to improve, make better pictures and generally just feel good about what you are creating. Let's go. Before we get going today though, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a domain name, a website or an online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Now there are photographers out there who just pick up their camera, go out, take pictures and always seem to be happy regardless of what happens. I'm envious of those people because for the rest of us, we're often faced with frustration, an internal battle of on the one hand being pleased and positive about what we create, yet always there's that devil on our shoulder telling us that our photos suck. It's a kind of creative anxiety that most artists feel at some point, but can even stop some people ever sharing or publishing their work. This also happens to the very best photographers. So let's look at some practical things we can do to kick that devil away and keep motivation and enjoyment high. So number one is the rule of one. And this is something that applies to absolutely everybody actually, and very simply states that if one person likes or dislikes your work, then someone else will too. It's very important because it tells us that we can't control what people think and we also cannot please everyone. The lesson here is that any fear or anxiety we may be feeling comes from in here, whether we've made the very best or the very worst image in the world, we know the reaction from the outside world is really gonna be the same. One person will like it and one person won't. Right back when I started this channel, I decided I was going to put absolutely everything out. And this was a good move because any form of self-censorship could have prevented an opportunity arising that got me to where I am today. And not everything lands like you think it will too. There have been times when I've made a picture or a video that I love and I think other people will love, but it ends up going the complete other way. Equally, there have been times when I've made something I thought might not be very popular and it ends up being very successful. Trying to predict what the people, the algorithm or social media will enjoy is a fairly fruitless exercise. It's much better to just get out of your own way, create with authenticity and put it out into the world for the market to decide. The ratio of likes to dislikes will move around, but there's also the gray area of indifference in the middle where people don't care one way or the other. This we overcome by working hard, being consistent and authentic, and trying whatever the medium is to communicate something interesting. One of my pet peeves when talking with other photographers is when they constantly put themselves down. I'm not sure if this is a generally British attitude, but it happens all too often when they say things like their photos rubbish or there's not many photographers around that are as bad as them. They might believe, I guess, it's that it's self-effacing, but personally, I think this is a defense mechanism people use where by setting expectations low, no one is ever going to be disappointed. Although this might be effective in the short term, over the long term, it will almost certainly build up a cloud of indifference around you. Believing in yourself and putting your work out into the world takes courage. And seeing people do this, whether they're a complete novice or a seasoned professional, is inspiring. A good way, I think, to improve your self-belief is to deepen the amount of thought you put in to capturing a single frame. Stop taking snapshots and start taking photographs. I made a full video about this before, but essentially the idea is this. Almost everyone can write, but not everyone is a writer. These days, everyone takes pictures, but not everyone is a photographer. The moment we do something intentional to try and make that frame better, it elevates it from a snapshot and it becomes a photograph. It's just simple things like taking a picture of your children instead of shooting down at them so the background of the image is the flaw. Just take a knee, shift 
your perspective and get down to their level and then you'll have a nice background. You'll instantly have better pictures. It's about slowing down and crafting something through the use of composition, thinking about the light and communicating something through the frame by deciding what to include in it, but also what to exclude from it. When we stop taking snapshots and start making photographs, you'll find your work takes on a new sense of meaning. Your guard comes down and you allow your personality and creativity to shine through. One of the best ways to make the things inside your frame more intriguing is to learn about the artistic elements and principles. I've made a video about the artistic elements before, but even if you haven't heard of this concept, one sign your photos don't suck is that you'll almost certainly have applied some of these elements before. Have you ever used leading lines? That's one of the artistic elements. Ever considered color or the textures in your frame? They are two more. Have you ever used contrast to your advantage? Thought about the balance of an image or used repetition and patterns in your frame? These are three examples of the artistic principles. The great thing about learning the elements and principles in more detail is not only does it help improve your own photography, but also increases your appreciation for other people's work and also gives us the ability to talk about a photograph in a way that sounds intelligent or like we actually know what we're on about. Let's use a couple of my images as an example. I like this one here because the lines create a layered image which provides a sense of depth and unity, which is another artistic principle. The differing textures of the trees, the snow, and the clouds as we go up through the frame adds interest and the color and contrast is subtle, but enhances the overall mood. Maybe the diagonal line upsets the balance a little bit, but for me, the triangular shape it creates works nicely with the squared crop. Here's another where the thick snowflakes and the slightly longer exposure have created a repeating pattern and a sense of movement, another principle. That, and that slightly obscures the forms of the trees, creating a soft and magical feeling image that's full of energy. The heavy snow has also simplified the background. So emphasis, another principle, remains on the trees without them getting lost in the wood. <laughs> See, I bet you knew loads of them, but it's worth studying in more detail. We're gonna get fired up for the next two, but as you know, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Now, if you are a photographer, running your own website is the best possible way to share your story with the world. And with Squarespace, it's just so easy to get set up. And unlike social media, you control how your images are presented. You start by using one of their beautiful templates, put some of your images and a bit of your text on there. And before you know it, you will have a unique and beautiful looking website. You don't need any coding knowledge either. And it will dynamically adjust to look to look perfect on all types of screens, including a phone, which is very important today. You can start with a simple gallery, but as you grow, you can then upgrade your site to an online store where you can easily start selling things like prints, books, cards, calendars, or anything else that takes your fancy. It also has a member section if you want to uh, run a subscription service. And in, in the unlikely event that you run into trouble, they have award winning customer service. I've used Squarespace for many, many years now and have never looked back. So go to squarespace.com or click the link down below and start your free trial. And if you like what you've created, then use the offer code FIRSTMAN to get 10% off your first purchase. One of the reasons we can often get sucked into thinking our photos suck is because we compare ourselves to other people who we deem to be successful. Now we know that comparison is the thief of joy and certainly social media is a bigger cesspit than ever, but really we need to think about how we actually measure success and it's probably different for everyone. I 
utterly reject the common idea of success, of someone who is rich and famous. If social media has taught us anything, is that these people are often miserable. A really solid tactic to see your own success with photography is to look back over your old photographs and witness the improvement and how far your skills have developed. That's a journey that we're all still on too. You don't just suddenly become brilliant. You have to graft, put in the hard miles and develop your craft as often as possible. But success is a very personal thing. It's very common to hear many photographers say things like, I only shoot for myself. Now, that's obviously totally cool, but I don't. And it's not even about pleasing people or being popular either. They say the best way to help yourself is to help others. And when I was a police officer serving the public, the way I did this was very obvious. But I realized quite recently that even as a full-time photographer, there are the times I feel most successful are when my images or videos have provided someone with inspiration, comfort, or reassurance or something. I want my work to do something for someone, make them feel something, and maybe even provide a public service. <laughs> I guess it's an ambitious desire, but the emails I get about my book are truly extraordinary because the message in there seems to strongly resonate with people. And I think it does give them something. It genuinely is an, uh, an honor and very humbling. But remember, it's not about the numbers and popularity. It's about the rule of one. I will put a link to my book down below if you want to check that out. And I'm truly grateful to everyone who supported me by picking up a copy. Now there is a lot of big talk out there, even photography channels where they never really seem to take a picture. But that aside, often action is lagging behind the talk. I'm a big believer that ideas are worthless and execution is everything. I used to work with a guy in Bradford called Dennis. He was about 25 years older than me and one of those people who are just full of wisdom he also wasn't one to mince his words. He'd often get frustrated about how rubbish some of our colleagues were. And he'd say, ah, they're just a gunner. And then seeing my confused face sort of said, yeah, they're gonna do this, they're gonna do that, but they never do bloody any of it. They're all talk. That really struck a chord with me. But with photographers, it often feels like this is the other way around. People suffering that artistic anxiety and saying their photos suck are often people, the same people that are also out there taking action, doing loads of cool and interesting things and working hard to fire off the shutter as often as possible. My point is simple. Actions speak louder than words. We should judge people on their actions and that includes ourselves trying to ignore that internal negative voice because it's probably telling you not to do something, not to take any risk and not take action. Instead, look at all the stuff you've done. Look at all the photographs you have taken. Look at everything you have achieved or overcome. There is no way your photography sucks. And everyone, everyone has an interesting story to tell. So go and tell it and don't apologize. <laughs> Why not take some action right now by sharing this video or leaving a comment down below. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear from you and I'll see you on another one very, very soon. Bye. <laughs>